standing, watching as the fire burns the cabin down and the screams of terror and pain can be heard. He slowly walks past the cop to retrieve the bowie knife from the ground, saying, Thank you for not getting my knife all bloody. With a backwards glance at the cop, he picks up the bodies of two police and carries them into the forest. He enters the forest that seems to conceal sunlight from everything as he realizes that he's in the black woods. Sighing in relief, he finds a perfect spot to hide the bodies in an old shack next to the woods. He then walks over to see a young lady jogging, wondering how she didn't hear the screaming and gunfire. He thinks to himself, Funny, I would have thought she would have heard the chaos. Following her, he watches as she arrives back at her cabin and enters. After she does, curiosity hits sociopathic like a ton of bricks as he approaches the cabin and sees the lady. She's actually kind of beautiful, Sabian thinks. But then he sees her heading to the door in the back, laughing as she heads out the cabin. Sabian watched her disappear from the cabin and into the woods. Sociopathic sees the door open. He sneaks into the home, thinking he can learn some things about his next victim. Thinking to himself, this is too easy. As he walks down the cabin hallway and opens the door, and sees blood everywhere on the floors, the ceiling, and on the window, everywhere. What is sitting in the middle of the room is a body, well, what's left of a body, and its internal organs are littered everywhere. Thinking to himself, <laughs> looks like somebody else has some demons in their closet, he decides that it's time to head out. A person like this never stays away too long. Quietly, he exits the room and leaves the cabin, sighing, realizing he may not have gotten the info he wanted, but he now knows one thing. He's not the only killer here. Pondering the fact that this very well could be the case, he hears a woman sobbing and screaming, Help me! Help me! Wondering what to do, he walks over to the house and looks through a window and sees a woman resembling his dead wife. As he opens the door to the right of him, he walks back into the cabin. Confused, he looks at her and says, Honey? She screams in terror. He took a closer look and realized his eyes were playing tricks on him. That isn't his wife. He then hears behind him, well, well, well. I guess I'm not the only mass killer in town. A sociopathic turns around and sees the woman he saw before running out the cabin. She actually is kind of beautiful, Sabian thinks to himself. He laughs and says, I guess I'm not the only psychopath around here. Name sociopathic. The woman holding her bloodied axe says, Pockets. Asking if he's creeping on her. And Sociopathic says, Trust me, I'm not. I heard rumors of a killer that showed up here, but I was here long ago, even before your rumors started. The girl starts screaming. Help me, please. Okay, you're free to go. I found somebody more interesting to play with. As she begins to cut her down, the woman screams out and runs, and as she does, Sociopathic says, You're crazy. He rips the axe from Pocket's hands and chucks the axe into her victim's head. And she collapses to the floor, dead. If you're gonna be a good killer, never, ever let your prey go free or escape. It makes it more work, and that's how I was able to find your hideout. By finding out about what's been going on since I left here. Who am I? Just a person wanting vengeance on the people who sold my, well, 
ex-boss a copy of an evil game. <laughs> Who am I kidding? He angrily punches a hole in the wall. Now I'm thinking about it again. She laughs. Have you ever thought it was just a coincidence the way things just happen? And they happen too fast for anyone, anybody to interfere. Just as she finishes her sentence, the lights start to flicker and the temperature drops, causing pockets and sociopathic to shiver as a cold feeling goes down their spines. Mist starts to fill the room, and the door behind them opens as they see the Grim Reaper hover through the door. He then says, Madison, I'm here for you, as it points to the dead body with the axe in her head. The figure then looks at Sociopathic and says, You've been leaving a bloody trail right to you, and you've been very sneaky about it. And you, as it points to Pockets, you've been making a name for yourself. Everybody here knows who you are. Pretty soon, if you keep this up, I'll be at this door soon for your soul as well. As it points his scythe at her. Who are you? Pockets asks. I'm Gabriel, or Death, if you would like to call me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must take the soul to its proper place. As he leaves, the temperature goes back to normal and the mist dissipates. Sociopathic speaks up and says, Fuck that guy. He's kind of sketchy. I already killed him once before and I can do it again. Well, I guess I'll catch you later. But don't try to follow me or stop me. I will kill you. I'm on a mission of vengeance and anybody caught in the middle of me and my vengeance will be learning first hand what it feels like to lose all hope and any glimmer of light. Goodbye, Pockets. He turns around, opens the door, and walks out. Sociopathic starts to head for home. He starts to have more memories of his family flooding in. He then says, That was my old life. I can't think of that anymore. Suddenly, a voice says, What, what the, the fuck, fuck are you talking, talking about? about? It's, it's your, your family you're, you're talking, talking about. about. They were my family. Now they're all dead. It's time to move on. He thinks of the new killer in town. How she had a very distinctive look. As if she was ready for anything. Laughing, Sociopathic says, Plus, I think I found a new playmate. She is very fine indeed. How, How can, can you, you just, just forget, forget about, about your wife, wife like that? that? You're, You're a, a monster, monster and, and a killer. killer. No, no, we are, are the monsters, monsters remember? remember? We, we are, are the killers. killers. Nobody, Nobody else will tell me otherwise. Now man up and shut the hell up, otherwise I'll end you too. Finally reaching his cabin, he opens the door and shuts it, hard. Shuffling around, he looks for some of the gear that he had brought with him. I've got my stuff in the car, he grumbles. Instead, he runs back out to the abandoned police car and opens the trunk. Inside, he finds a Remington 870 shotgun, as well as some body armor and extra shells. He thinks to himself, I've got myself some extra stuff, and I guess that may come in handy. Now if I only had a partner, and who am I kidding? I may be able to convince Pockets to join me. After all, every king needs a queen, but she'll just have to adjust her life for me. I'm probably a wanted man by now, so in this case... She'll have to be the one that does supply runs for us both. He decides it's time to make some food. He looks around for some food and finds some, in the form of fish, that he had left here last week in the freezer. Time to cook the fish. He grabs some gasoline and wood, and brings the fish outside and throws the wood into a fire pit. Well, good things never last, so what's the point in waiting? He thinks, as he starts to cook the frozen fish. It may not taste the same, but who cares? He remembers the cartridge in his switch. Oh yeah, I forgot! As he takes the console out. 
This cursed game has brought me a lot of trouble, but what the fuck? The game isn't the same. It's the normal edition. What's going on? Have I been going mad this entire time? No, this, this can't be. I won't accept it, nor should I. Sabian turns the game on and sees himself on the main menu instead of Jason. He then realizes that all the victims are the people he's killed. A cutscene shows him throwing his old boss off the boat. Freaking out, he throws his switch and it shatters on the ground in front of him. In frustration, he says, What the hell is happening to my life? I just don't understand. As he looks outside, the sun starts to dim. Sociopathic then walks to the window and says, I miss those days. What about you? Sabian says, We can still have, have that life. It's not, not completely, completely over. Just, Just because, because our family is dead doesn't mean that we need to end everything in self-pity. Sociopathic says, How do you know life will go on? As he heads outside and to the boathouse. Sociopathic enters the boathouse after the sun has fallen and most of the light had been replaced by darkness. However, light shines bright from the full moon hanging in the sky. He opens the door and sees a man hanging from the ceiling by a noose with a burlap sack over his head. Sociopathic then laughs and says, <laughs> Wow, there's a lot of bodies lately. As he starts to sing to himself, let the bodies hit the floor, he then finds a suicide note on the table next to the hanging body. To whomever finds this note, I've killed myself for many reasons, but the main one is I can no longer deal with the pain that I'm forced to go through every day after I killed my beloved. And after reading this note, it officially becomes your problem. But there are a couple of psychos out here killing people. If I don't do it first, I'll probably be next. Farewell. He examines the body of the corpse, and whoever was hanging, he reaches into his wallet and pulls out his ID. He was part of the Department of Defense, and his name was Frank Marshall. He's seven feet tall and 380 pounds. He was sent to hunt down somebody known only by few as Casper a serial killer who supposedly comes out of the lake and kills everybody, like in the films, Friday the 13th. Legend has it that the undead killer takes vengeance on unfortunate victims of Locust Lake. Frank Marshall was also sent to investigate the woman in the lake area, a.k.a. the woman of the water, known by her name, given by the story of the bear and the deer by local Native American tribes. A voice says to Sociopathic, Look at the damage we've caused. We've killed innocents. We've murdered officers of the law, as well as killed many innocent people, including children of all things. I beg you to stop. Sociopathic then says to the voice, Sabian, shut up. You created me the moment your family was killed. I have sat in your mind for a very long time to be your one-of-a-kind friend that would protect you no matter what the cost. And now, now that you see the true darkness inside you, behind your mask, you want to shut me out? No, I won't go back until all of reality has felt my pain and suffering as he slowly pulls out the game that had been causing him to regret everything. The voice then says, What, what about, about your other, other family? family? The cleaving, cleaving thought from, from bone family. Sociopathic then says, What about them? They knew who we are. You think that they're going to care? Like they're going to come find us? They will if they truly need us. Kind of like, what about the sociopathic channel when it goes down? Remember when it had to restart that time? 
It is past and history is repeated. I think it's time for us to begin. As he finishes his sentence, he starts to hear a scraping outside the patio. He runs immediately to see a rusty shovel that he used to dig his family's graves. When he sees it, he picks it up, saying, How did this get here? In closer inspection, he notices it's dripping with water. He hears a sudden loud thud behind him and turns to see a body with a carving in it. Sociopathic looks at the writing and reads, Casper Rises. Social media can be very unpredictable, especially regarding horror content. If this content gets removed, all new content will be simultaneously presented on various websites provided in the description to this video. Make sure to follow me in other digital spaces so that you never miss out on the terror. Also, if you like this video, make sure to leave a comment and hit the like button. It helps the channel a lot. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy what's here, consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you never miss an upload. Writing is a dream of mine, and it's all of you that make that dream come true.